What is it like to be you? I had a lot of opportunity to go up, you know, and I, there was a lot of time where I coded and if it wasn't for my doctor to, who showed up, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here today. Like, there's many times where I, I was not even guaranteed the next day. What is your diagnosis? I was never really given an actual diagnosis. I was, when I was in the Miami Children's Hospital, I was always referred as a craniofacial patient. My genetic doctor, she told me that there's no chromosomal like, problem or anything. She just said that most likely my mom did drug while well, I got her in the gestational period and I ended up not finishing my whole, you know, facial development. When I was first born, I was missing most of my, like, my nose. I was missing my nose. I didn't have, like, most of my, my upper jaw was missing. Uh, I didn't have no hearing. Uh, my eye socket was missing. Uh, I, I didn't have no chic fat. I didn't have a lot of things that I have now. I spent a lot of time, a lot of years, until the 1918, uh, I was in the hospital, just pretty much in that whole environment. Did you have a lot of surgeries? I had at least three a year from the day I was born all the way until 13, 14. I had one, that three or four a year. So they really only told me that it was a hiccup in the, uh, in the whole developmental process in the gestational period. And uh, it was most likely drug related. Well, I was in the hospital from the day I was born to one year old. One and a half. I learned how to walk and everything at the hospital. When I was in the hospital and my grandma was there by, my, by herself, while my mom and my dad were partying and having fun, and my grandma would call them crying, uh, you know, having them, the doctor would tell her, hey, you know, he's really complicated. We don't, you know, we don't guarantee overnight, you know. And she would call my parents and they would never show up. The only time my mom wanted to show up was when TLC wanted to interview me uh, for a show. Uh, and that's when she did want, she wanted to like perceive, you know, like, oh, she's there, you know, but in reality, she's never been there. It's only been my grandparents. I ended up with my mom after a year. I went to her house with my brother. My mom didn't really handle it. My, you being around me really well. So, it was, um, she really showed my brother over to me. Like, she would like, if we would go out, she will put me in the stroller and she will cover me up and like leave him out. Uh, if I got annoying, she will put me in a closet. It was a struggle growing up. Uh, emotionally, just having my mom there, but at the same time, just your mom being your, basically your worst enemy, you know? Uh, at the age of two years old, a little bit less than that, uh, I was in the house with her and she left the crib uh, down and I fell out of it and I ended up breaking my leg and that's when uh, I was taken from her and I ended up at a foster care facility for about a year and then around the age of two and a half they, they were telling my grandma that um, if they were interested in adopting me because they were going to transfer me to North Carolina to try to see if I had any better luck over there. It was just a struggle just trying to survive another day to figure it out, you know, and uh, it was thanks to my grandma that I was able to be, I was able to just do what I did. She took me, she took on the responsibility uh, to raise me. My grandma devoted a lot of time uh, from from two years ago all the way into 20 years old. She spent in the hospital. She never, like, I would go to sleep and wake up, and she was there. Not, she never missed a beat. I lived in a behind the canal, so I seen all my my cousins, siblings swimming, and I was just you know left out. They would go running around with their friends, and uh, it was it was tough. Why weren't you allowed to be included? I mainly I couldn't swim because of my tracheostomy tubing. I had it until I was twelve, thirteen, and all the way, and I had a feeding tube for a while, so I was never... So with the trick, were you hooked up to an oxygen machine? I was basically hooked up to, yeah, to a, to a humidifier machine. I couldn't, like, if I was 10 minutes without it, I'd start suffocating, start, like, 
changing colors and losing the oxygen. And so I was never really allowed to move around much. What was it like for you to see all the other kids playing? It was tough. Uh, you know, like any little boy, they want to run around and, and interact and get hurt like their, their sibling do, you know. But, you know, it, it taught me a lot of lessons. Tell me about your eyesight. My eyesight, um, it was all right until at the age of seven when I had my, uh, my when they cut me open from side to side and they put my skin forward, they damaged my optical nerves. And so I have a corner guard. So like I can see, I can see like people and stuff like that, but it's more like a blur. So, but if you know, to like, you know, get around and see my kids and uh, there are people worse than me, you know, and there are people that I can't see and it's worse. So I don't let it bring me down. You know, I know that eventually technology will catch up and something will happen. Tell me about the first time you met Ariel. Um, well, we were outside. I had seen a dog loose outside my house and I just went outside. I love dogs. So I went outside to see it and um, I ended up catching her. And he came outside realizing she was out a few minutes later. One morning, I let my dog out and she went out, right, she wandered off and I, I lost her. And then 20 minutes later, I found her with her. And then just talking every, almost every day, um, ended up being a dog sitter for him, watching the dog when he was at work. Um, became a little more serious and Later on the next year, got married, and then a few months after that, we ended up getting pregnant with our first son. We met, and here we are 12 years, 11, 12 years later, um, with five kids, and I can't complain. Like, the way she treats me has been, like, like it was all worth it. Like, and I, I would relive my childhood all over again if I was guaranteed to be here again, like, where I am today. Who are these two? So this is Vitalina and Madison. What's your favorite thing about them when they're at this age? They bond with you so much and like just seeing how they react and how they smile all the time. It just shows you that you're doing something right. What is it like to be a dad? It, it's great, amazing, like like a feeling that you get, you, uh, just the satisfaction that you get every day, uh, seeing your kid call you dad and how they love on you and how they oversee my disabilities. Um, it's like true satisfaction. Like, it, it's hard to really explain it to you actually in it. Like, it's, it's something that you can't really explain it to work. It's something that you have to like feel it. Um, but it's a true, it's, it's like a true blessing. Even after five kids, I'm still, I'm still in shock with just seeing them grow up and just the, the opportunity that I get every time I get a new baby. Yeah. Just, you know, like. Honey? Honey? Would you consider it an honor? Complete honor. Just being their father and just. Queen? You know, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. As an adult, how have you processed the trauma your parents put you through so that you can be a great dad for your kids? Well, um. I always aspired to be what they were for me, you know, like, um, I always, I knew what it was to be without a parent, and I always promised my kids, all of them, that I would do whatever it takes to make sure that they're always together, no matter what, that they're always going to see their mom and their dad together, because I know how it is to be in a tough moment, and I'm blessed not to have any of my kids go through what I went through. I always make sure that they have, you know, Memories that they never forget about us, you know, like it's just been a true blessing being there for them every day of their lives. From the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep, uh, before they get up, before they go to school, after they get out of school, we're there for them. It's just been, you know, amazing to know that they, they have all their memories with us around all the time. What's your favorite memory with your dad? When he goes swimming with me. 
and he lets me ride on his back when we swim. I always told him, even if my baby was born with half a head, um, he's going to be born. Uh, there's a reason why we're all here. And uh, no matter how we look, we all have a purpose. Whether you find out at a young age or at an old age, it already it, all that matters is you, you look for that purpose. And, and you, you know, once you find it, it makes life a lot more worth it. How would you describe the type of dad that Ariel is? Oh man, he is such a hands-on, um, really just a great dad. He's constantly with them, helping them grow, being in their life, showing them love, um, making sure that each of them is equally loved, especially with how many there are. It's a handful, and he shows that he can handle it all. It's great. Ever since I became a father, like, my whole perspective is truly changed, like, my oldest is 10 years old on the 15th and he never asked me about anything. Like, he sees me every day and he never had the curiosity to even question anything. Like, and he sees normal people every day, you know? And just to see him grow up and see my daughter grow up and they see, they see me like a normal person, it's, it's enough, uh, it's enough, um, I don't know how to explain it, like, confirmation from them like you know I feel enough you know like I feel satisfied that they see me normal then to where I don't have to worry about you know I go out and like, like I don't care no more. Is there anything unique about your dad? Mm, he's a good dad. What makes him a good dad? Jesus a lot. When people tell you it's impossible, uh, nothing here in life is impossible. When you actually try and you believe in yourself and you don't worry about what other people think about you, uh, a lot of possibilities and opportunities in life open up. What is it like to be Lucinda's dad? It's amazing. Um, just the validation that I get from them every day. Um, she, every five minutes is running, randomly just running, hugging me and and just what? telling me how much you love me and just what? the validation that I get from all of them. What's it like to hear her starting to talk? It, it's, it's amazing that like, that feeling of just seeing them hit those milestones at a young age and being able to communicate and see stuff. See them do things that I couldn't do is just inspiring to me. Wow, it's a light. Some people have it easy, some people are, you know, have it tough and are born like I was and they have to man up at a young age because my grandma always taught me that if my mom and dad weren't here for me when I was a young kid and, and, and I really needed them, they're not going to be there for me when I'm an adult. And it was the truth, you know, I ended up being an adult and when it's been tough uh, and I haven't had anybody there, you know, and I figured it out all on my own. Uh, I moved out at age 18 from my grandma's house. And I never went back. I turned into an adult. I, I, you know, I started working at McDonald's, flipping burgers, and working overnight at Wendy'si and Walgreens. So he, knowing how he, how he went through his life without his mother, without his father, um, seeing how distant most of his family was, he was able to know how he wanted to make things different, raising his own kids. And he has definitely made that a reality. He is 100% involved with them and raising them. And he, they love him so much. They constantly are seeking him out. Um, our daughter always wants to be with him by his side. They're, they're all just, they are growing so strongly and so happily because of him. And I can't. I, can't say any more than that. I would relive my life, my hard childhood, all and over again to just be where I am today, just at the age of 32, and with all my kids and my family, it's been a truly blessing.